Thank you for a kind introduction. I'm really um, happy that I can share our experience. Uh, it is uh, very difficult to me to be a first speaker in this session because I will show you our way. And the next lectures, you probably can hear how should we manage the problem. But uh, three years ago, we decided to uh, start a discussion about the, our curriculum, uh, about changes, about uh, possible directions. And uh, I would like to share our uh, steps, some uh, first steps, because uh, now uh, we plan really to rebuild our curriculum after, as I said, this uh, two years of uh, discussion um, and uh, preliminary agreements. First of all, I have no, uh, nothing to disclose. I'm a vice dean and I'm responsible for the curriculum development in our faculty. Uh, as I said, uh, we have a committee in our university, a committee about 25 uh, people, students, faculty members, uh, some uh, PhD uh, students too. And every year at the beginning of the academic year, we uh, started discussion about the previous year. So what was okay, what was not okay. And uh, finally, we think about the question, are changes in the curriculum of the medical faculty necessary? And uh, usually we receive the answer, ah, maybe some slight changes, we introduce some courses, we uh, change the, some uh, methods, uh, we change uh, exercises for simulations or something like this, but not uh, really fundamental changes. But three years ago, before pandemia, uh, some of our faculty members and some of the students, they raised the hand. Yes, we had to start discussion about the global changes. Why? Because uh, mobility of our students, mobility of our staff, and of course, uh, the global changes in medical education. We have a good uh, team in our uh, medical uh, education department. So we decided to start it, uh, such a discussion. And the first question was, what is uh, really our goal? And the simple answer, educate a good doctor. But the next question, what doesn't mean good doctor? And we stop. 25 people in the room and 25 opinions. Maybe good GP, maybe good uh, person uh, prepared for specialization, maybe the doctor who can teach, or the most important is a cooperation within the team, and so on. So we start such discussion. Of course, in Poland, uh, we have uh, some regulations. Uh, we have something uh, which is called learning objectives, and uh, there's more than 300 uh, learning objectives in our regulations. So each doctor, uh, each graduate should know, should uh, demonstrate some skills, and uh, should uh, possess some personal social competences. And I said there's uh, more than 300. And in my opinion, this is very detailed may be useful, but there's no some global picture and not really um, something which can differential between universities, between uh, different graduates. There's no simple way to find your individual pathway. So we, we try to find uh, different uh, systems and different uh, definitions. And uh, we focus on two. One was a Canadian 
uh, physician competency framework. That's the doctor is a medical expert. Uh, and you can see the expert, which also possess uh, the, uh, is a good communicator, collaborator, health advocate, leader, scholar, and professional. Some general picture. The same as in the UK, uh, they um, define the outcomes, uh, three levels, uh, professional knowledge, professional skills, and uh, professional values and behaviors, and try to um, give uh, all these outcomes, to, to connect these outcomes with specific uh, courses. So, uh, in my opinion, to think about profile of your graduate is important because uh, we can discuss together as a faculty members and students. Uh, based on this, we can make decision about curriculum. And of course, uh, it can help to maintain consistency between teaching and assessment. Uh, during our discussion, uh, the sentence which come back quite often was, it is not possible to teach all medicine. So uh, there is a, some uh, background, there's some, uh, important, uh, some important issues, but we have some, we should think about some differences between uh, medical curricula, even in Poland. So we can think about uh, choice of knowledge and skills to be acquired by our students. And such a uh, profile, graduate profile, can be a clear map for students showing the way to the medical profession. Uh, in 2018, our students, they uh, perform survey and they ask colleagues many questions, but I uh, select these two questions because for me, the answers here was like disaster. The first statement uh, was most of the things I need to learn seems important for my future profession. The green, it means yes. The yellow, I'm not sure. And the red, no. And you can see that students during the first four years, the uh, no answer, something like 20 to 30%. But the students uh, fifth or sixth, sixth year of our program, the answer, the negative answer is more than 50%. So I really was afraid as a dean, students, this is anonymous uh, survey, and they answers uh, really uh, suggest we need think about our curriculum. And the second question was, I know what knowledge and or skills I should acquire in each subject. And again, we receive a lot of negative answers. So we decide really to think about our uh, curriculum, our objectives, uh, learning objectives, and uh, to think about the profile of our graduate. So, in my opinion, to create such profile at the beginning uh, can be uh, useful because it's a general concept that will guide the design of the curriculum. It will help to integrate teaching in various courses. Uh, it will be a clear message for current students and potential candidates. Uh, for students, uh, what competencies they will receive at our university. And it, it will help to distinguish the Jagiellonia University Medical College from other medical universities in Poland. So uh, at the discussion, uh, we recognize six fields or six profiles. That's, uh, as I said, Maybe we should think about the GP as our outcome. So in such a case, when we will develop our curriculum, we should uh, 
Think about more courses in GP offices. If we, uh, sorry, uh, if we think that our outcome is a doctor ready for specialization, we will take care about more courses in, uh, in, uh, uh, in university hospitals. If it's a, a different option, as a person uh, who is a good uh, candidate for scientific work, we have to think about uh, maybe some uh, courses, how to perform a scientific uh, work. So uh, at this moment, uh, we have these six profiles, and uh, of course, it's not possible to select all of them. But uh, in my opinion, we can think about to create some pathways so, uh, which we can uh, propose for our students, and they can um, choose uh, the, the, their own way. Okay, so this is the, our first step. The second step was uh, analysis of our strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And uh, we create the, uh, we create, uh, the uh, online uh, platform. And the faculty members and students and, as I said, PhD students, they can fill these four fields with your own uh, uh, thoughts. And uh, at the end, we try to sum up the most important points. And what is uh, interesting after our discussion, that's uh, our strength. Number one, they are our teachers. Uh, much of the staff is trained. We have a training uh, uh, staff, so it's OK. We have a good, uh, quite good infrastructure. We have a quite good current curriculum. We have the good students, uh, one of the best uh, in the country. And we have open mind in our, our authorities. What are our weakness? And what is interesting, number one, teachers. So it's our strength and it's our weakness. And uh, when I show you our opportunities and uh, threats, again, we will find teachers in all these four points. And uh, in my opinion, it's uh, really fundamental to think about teachers. You cannot uh, uh, rebuild the curriculum uh, if you cannot prepare the teachers for a new roles. Uh, why we think there is a good time to change our curriculum? Because uh, the governmental regulations give, um, give us some freedom. So uh, maybe we can uh, give these uh, pathways for our students. We have a team of experts able to skillfully use the opportunities. As I said, our, our team is again here. Uh, we have a quite good international cooperation and recognition. So uh, there's a good student exchange, staff exchange, and training programs. So we really can use uh, good uh, examples. Uh, we have a good starting position because uh, not many universities have made decision to move yet. And there's a chance to maintain a leading position and thus access to students with the high potential. So that was our first step, discussion who. And uh, mm -hmm. simultaneously, the second team discuss how. So first, we uh, perform some review of the different curriculum designs, so probably the part of this meeting. So we discuss about systemic uh, curriculum, helix, traditional, double helix. We discuss uh, a curriculum based on the healthy, ill, uh, diagnosis management circle. And also, we discuss the curriculum based on uh, processes like circulation, respiration, excretion, movement, thinking, and so on. But finally, 
Uh, after a discussion, we couldn't decide, we think at this moment, but we recognize four important issues, uh, four important points, key points, for our future development. We call them the four I. So we think that we should uh, point it out uh, integration of uh, courses, interaction between students and patients and uh, professionals, uh, we, uh, individuality. So as I said, that we have to think about uh, pathways for students and interprofessionalism. So we have to think about teaching medical doctors together with nurses, uh, pharmacists, uh, that's these four points are important. And the third uh, group in our committee decide to think about uh, assessment of uh, uh, our uh, assessment of our learning objectives. So uh, this is a cartoon which I received from uh, one of our uh, committee member. And I'm, I'm really, uh, I like this. That's, uh, uh, you can see at the end, what is the aim of our students? Forget and move forward. So it's not really a good idea. So we try to think about the fundamental change of the assessment of our students. So uh, probably you know this pyramid that uh, uh, there are different methods for different uh, levels of knowledge and skills. So uh, if you should uh, 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 check the facts, uh, you can use the test oral exam. Uh, if you uh, want to check more uh, uh, difficult uh, uh, tasks, you, you can uh, um, also uh, ask for some essays. And uh, if you want to check the skills, of course, we have some, uh, some methods. But the most important uh, in real life is to check the performance. Uh, and this is very difficult because it's real life and how to check the, the student's uh, readiness for the, for the uh, uh, work. This is really uh, difficult. In our curriculum, uh, we have uh, OSCE exams. We have the three exams uh, during our curriculum, uh, after the second, after the third, and after the sixth uh, final exam. But we think it's not enough to check the skills. So we discuss in more details about the mini clinical evaluation exercise, mini techs as a tool. And uh, of course, we are not ready to use uh, this tool at this moment. So this is one of the reasons that we have to really uh, train our um, uh, team, our faculty members. And moreover, we try to discuss about mentoring. Some of the universities, of course, use this method uh, in our university there is not uh, uh, yet, and we propose uh, um, uh, some uh, mentoring system uh, for the future based on uh, classes so with mentors once uh, a week, uh, groups of 12 people, two for, for each year of the study, possibly of friendly help, assessment on individual students' progress, uh, and these mentors, of course, can decrease the dean's work. So I'm happy. Also, we uh, try to discuss about the electronic portfolio. So information about the student, uh, student collected in one place, data on the results of examinations, but also some other assessments, uh, uh, some self-assessment and assessment uh, in the workplace by a teacher. So to sum up my presentation, as I said, we are at the beginning of our way. Uh, after two years, uh, we discussed a lot. 
and uh, now we plan uh, to move forward. We have a three working teams, uh, one about profile of our graduate, the second about curriculum development, and the third about sy system of assessment and the verification of learning outcomes. So in this place, I'm really uh, sincerely thanks to my collaboration collaborators. There's uh, probably the, the bigger group, not only uh, the people in this list, but uh, uh, to move forward, uh, we really have to involve uh, whole faculty. And here you can see the picture of our city, and you can see in distance the Tatra Mountains. There's only one or two days per year that you can see from our city Tatra Mountains. But I hope I can see the change of our curriculum in the next future. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, I have also always seen you as a very optimistic uh, uh, person, but I didn't know that you're that optimistic. Okay, let's see. The question is, what's the biggest obstacle in your opinion? It's a very good question. Uh, I think uh, teachers, it's mean faculty members. Still, I think it's uh, the, the, the biggest challenge um, because to move forward, uh, that should be really agreement to move forward. So in my opinion, we have to show our way of thinking. We have to show what we did and we should uh, involve more people, more faculty members. Of course, we have students. So also involve students. Students are, I think, very important to, uh, to new curriculum development. So this is the, the, the challenge. Curriculum development as a, a change management uh, uh, program, basically. Yes. Okay, thank you very much.